Sometimes life brings us challenges, and when attorney Ron Johnson goes to work every day, he's ready to fight for you. Ron Johnson represents clients in personal injury and wrongful death cases, provides mediation in matters such as wills and real estate transactions, and assists with social security disability. His goal is to serve his community and help his clients navigate complicated systems to access the benefits and fair treatment they are entitled to by law. He'll make sure you understand your rights and responsibilities and won't leave you behind to fend for yourself. Ron Johnson's office is local, and he is accessible to work with you personally, whether face-to-face, -face, by phone, or video conference. Let his 53 years of experience help guide you to peace of mind and the best possible outcome in your case. Your first consultation is free. Charges for Social Security Disability Services are subject to approval by the Social Security Administration. Call the Law Office of Ron B. Johnson at 972-938-7163 or visit www.lawofficeofronjohnson.com to schedule your free consultation. When you walk into your home, the first thing you come in contact with is your floor. You want it to be reliable and stylish, and you want to be sure you have the right professionals to design and craft it. OC Rugs has you covered. They provide durable products that stand the test of time and custom designs that will fit your aesthetic and preferences. OC Rugs products are constructed to be stable and prevent skidding, so anyone, whether you're taking your first steps or it's your first time visiting, can feel confident getting around your home. OC Rugs features products from Cooper Family Floors, a mobile, family-owned business committed to providing quality floor service at affordable prices. Cooper Family Floors puts the needs of the customer first, always seeking to make each project better than the last. They provide luxury vinyl plank and laminate flooring, as well as carpet and pad, engineering wood, and tile. Cooper Family Floors has a combined 42 years of flooring experience and will put that wisdom to work for you without breaking the bank. Whether you need a new floor installed in your home or the right rug to complete your perfect design plan, OC Rugs and Cooper Family Floors will get the job done right. Visit OC Rugs at their Lancaster showroom located at 1920 North I-35E or visit their website at www.ocrug.com. For Cooper Family Floors, call 214-437-7424 or visit www.cooperfamilyfloors.com. Welcome to Becky's Kitchen. Today we're going to make a fancy little drink that I discovered a few weeks ago in a great French restaurant in Dallas. And we were waiting, sitting out there waiting, and I kept seeing the waiters bring this to people's tables. I went, what is that? <laughs> and then they would pour something on it. And after our hour and 45 minute wait, when we finally got to a table, I said, so what is that thing? And they said, oh, it's peche mignon. I went, okay, thank you, I want one. I looked it up, peche means peach. So I, I, it's a little thin peach drink. So anyway, then I started trying to think, how, how can I do that? You know, how do I get a round ball of ice? And I was thinking, mm, maybe make two half circles, of like a something, and then put them together and freeze them. Well, it just so happens that you can actually buy the mold <laughs> at Amazon, of course. And so I did, and now I've been making them. Uh, but th this came with no directions, no directions. But the waiter told me that this had muddled uh, raspberries and mangoes and mint, so that's where I started. And so I will attempt to make it. The, the catch comes when you pour in the liquid. It's hard to know how much, but anyway. Okay, so you got to have the raspberries, I think, because that makes that pretty purple part on one side. Strawberries, I don't think, would be as colorful. So this is actually for my spice grinder. It doesn't matter. And you can also use like a, the uh, end of a wooden spoon. You don't have to just get them so they're kind of mushy. This thing is really good. Like, let's say you have some raspberries or peaches or whatever in your fridge that are getting a little 
soft. This is the perfect way to get those out of your fridge and into your freezer and ready for your next wonderful treat. Okay, so they're muddled. And I, I have an assembly line. I mean, I had to figure this all out myself, but I did it. Okay, now, I, at the first time I made them, I bought fresh mango, fresh peaches. But then you're just dicing them up into little tiny pieces, and it's much more convenient, I think, to buy a bag of frozen mangoes and a bag of frozen peaches. So that's what I did. And don't leave out the mango because, and I had not I had never cooked with mango before. I never bought a mango before, but I, I like it. So th this is too big. This is how they come, frozen. So we're just going to have to get our knife and chop them down a little bit. you got to pack a lot of fruit in a little tiny area. Okay, and then the peaches. I noticed the fresh peaches are at the store now, but I think these work just fine. Okay, now, if you notice, mangoes and peaches are pretty much the same color, and I needed a little bit of variation in color, so I decided that I would do strawberries in between the peach and mango layers. Now, I have to tell you about, this is the neatest thing that I discovered by accident. You know, you buy strawberries, and if you just put them in your fridge, they don't last very long. They get mushy and everything. Well, for some reason, I, I took them out of their container. I washed them real good in cold water, then I dried them completely, completely dry, and then I sliced them, and I put them in one of these nifty little containers. And it's so, it, in two weeks, they were still good, and I could just, if I wanted strawberries on yogurt or something, I could just go in there. They were all ready to go, you know, so I recommend that. That's what I do every time when I buy strawberries now. I fix them like that, except for a few fancy ones, or you're going to dip them in chocolate or something. So I'm going to chop up a few strawberries to put in between the yellow layers. So we'll have two red layers and two yellow layers, basically. Actually, when you chop up strawberries, they're not all that red. But you can use any kind of fruit you want. You know, I saw a, a video where somebody was using pineapple, and they were actually using canned pineapple. But no. Okay. Now, this is mint, and I really do think it needs to be mint. And from the process of trying this over and over, don't put your mint on the top because it just floats up to the top. You want it in the middle of those layers of fruit. Okay, so you put the fruit in the bottom part of the mold. This over here. And you can't put too much because you got to make room for all of it, but you do, you do want enough red at the bottom so that it makes the ice ball look neat. I think the one that we had at the restaurant actually had a little bit of lime peel in there, which would add color too, but so does the mint, so I'm just stuck with the mint. Smells good. Okay. So now I have my red layer, so now it's time for a little bit of yellow, not too much. The neat thing about this is it melts in your drink, but it doesn't dilute your drink. It just adds more flavor. The more it melts, the more flavor. Okay, then a little bit of strawberries. I was trying to think of how you could make it into an autumn. I don't know. I guess, well, the mango would be autumn-y. What else could you put in there that would, maybe apple? That'd probably be good. All right, now this is the time 
to put the mint before you put the last layer. So this is from my garden. And I was just, I was putting a whole leaf as, as long as it's not huge, you can. On the top of the strawberry layer. Of course, you know, you can make this however you want. If you don't like mint, don't put it in there. I bet you could put like basil or something else in there too. Okay, so now we're ready for the last layer of fruit. And this is the mango layer. And you want to make sure it, it weights down that mint leaf. Okay. Now. This is the part I haven't exactly figured out yet. How much liquid do you put in it? You can't see. It came with um, this very small, I don't know if you can even see this, this is a little funnel that came with the kit because you pour the liquid through these holes in the top. Well, we found a better funnel. But still, the only way I know when I have too much orange juice in there is when it spills over. And it does that pretty much all the time. I think I'll put it on this tray in case it spills over. But I'm getting better. Yesterday I was trying to measure. I can tell you what it, it isn't a half a cup. It isn't even a fourth a cup. All right. So you put this, uh, whatever it is made out of, silicone, I guess. Make sure it's really sealed down there. And then it's time to put in the orange juice. I put in orange juice, but you know, you could, like if you want to do it for iced tea or something, or water, you could put in like lemonade or limeade, sangria. <laughs> I don't know if that sangria would freeze all the way. Okay, so this is way too much because I just poured it in here. It's just kind of like you pour it in And it, when it goes down, and then pretty soon, if it starts to seep out the sides, and I know it's full. You keep filling it up, and then you put it in the freezer for at least four hours. And another thing is when you take it out of the freezer, you have to let it sit out at least 10 minutes before you can get it back open. So here's one I made yesterday. I'm hoping that there will be at least one ice ball that's completely round because that means I got the exact amount of orange juice in there. If not, they still are really good, but um, I'm trying so hard to get those round ones. So, after this has been sitting out, ah, I see one. And even if they have a little flat top, it, put the flat top on the bottom of the glass and nobody will ever know. Or use a, a glass that's not clear and nobody will ever know. Okay. This is what they look like. Yay! Yay! All right. The other thing I, I have to be really careful with, because wine glasses are kind of fragile, so I was just kind of like start it at the side and put it down. Then I, I take these and put them in my Ziploc bags, individuals, and then when you want one, you can just pull one out, pop it in your glass, and pour whatever you want on it. Okay. Now, I know when the waiter came, he had a carafe of Prosecco. It's kind of buzz, uh, fizzy. So he was like, if I do this right, it won't go flowing over the top of the glass. So he did. Let's see. He 
Attaché mignon. Salud. I think that's not French. <laughs> it is very good. Thank you for coming to Becky's Kitchen today. And you can get all the recipes on the Dale's Down Home website. Bye-bye.